Hey, thanks for coming by the workshop today. You're about to see a video on how I made these miniature concrete steps uh, for a skate park warehouse diorama that I did. But stick around to the end of the video and I will show you how you can calculate your own riser and tread depth to make sure that your own scaled stairs uh, look correct if you're gonna try this exact process. So I'll see you at the end of the video. The structure of this is actually quite simple. It's just uh, one inch pieces of foam and two inch pieces of foam cut at different heights and all at the same width. 2 inch foam in the back, 2 1 inch pieces of foam, a 2 inch piece of foam flipped sideways, and 2 more 1 inch pieces of foam. All cut to the different stair heights or riser heights that I needed them glued together. And I took care of the seams by spreading some drywall putty across them and then sanding it down when it was dry. But the real thing here that sells the illusion of reality is of course the paint job. And that starts just like I do most of my concrete or concrete like things or rock like things with a very, very dense, even coat of flat black. I'm just going to use two different grays on this uh, on top of the black base coat. This is just a dark gray and uh, all I'm going to do is a very, 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 very heavy dry brushing over the black. Um, you could do it lighter if you wanted to or you could start with a lighter color, a darker color. It's totally up to you. I'm just going to stick with grays for the actual concrete here and it may look like I'm spreading a pretty thick coat of gray on this but as you can see I am just dry brushing it back and forth all over the piece and I am trying intentionally to spread the brush strokes on as linearly uh, with the piece and the aligned with the uh, edges of the piece as I can. So not in swirls or angles or curves but left to right, top to bottom, back and forth with the lines of the piece. I feel like this always makes things look a little bit more realistic as if an actual concrete finisher had used a trowel to lay the paint on. You may not see the paint lines when it's done, but I do feel like I've noticed uh, when I do this practice, it helps sell the illusion, uh, even on a micro scale, that something was done or may actually be real and was done with real tools, uh, how it would have really been done in real life. As you can see, that layer is pretty thick, but uh, it's hard to see on camera, but it is just dry brushed. now doing the exact same thing that I did with the dark gray but now with a light gray. I think this color is called granite gray. It's just the apple barrel paints from Walmart. I think they actually work great on this insulation foam. But I'm just applying the same principle going left to right or top to bottom up and down and uh, just kind of trying to create the illusion that it, the concrete was finished by an actual miniature human. Uh, everything was done left to right top to bottom up and down. And uh, it really, really, really helps lay good groundwork for the uh, washes and weathering that we're gonna do later. One of the most important steps in making uh, concrete look real is to add a dark wash over the top if you paint it in the style that I just did. So going dark to light and then bringing that tonality, that brightness back down uh, for this style. Obviously you could keep it light if you wanted to, but I'm using this silty black wash that I made. I'm actually just getting it right out of my dirty paint water because it's always sort of a nice mixture of just enough uh, of the darker tones and silty feeling paint. And I'm just brushing it on again, quite linearly left to right, up and down. And uh, I'm just kind of letting it sit there. I'm not really trying to paint it in or paint it on. After I let it sit there too, I just dab it off as you see to my liking to where I feel like um, I'm getting the paint and the wash and the darkness to sit in the areas I want it to. I may do this process twice, I may not. 
I think this time I did just do it once. It seemed to suffice uh, to achieve the effect. And as I brush up and down on the sides, the paint drips down just like it would in real life or the atmospherics or the weather would run off the sides. And I feel like, again, that helps sell the illusion that this is, re is real, it's just real small. So all those kinds of little things, making sure that the uh, flow of the paint and the brush strokes are in the direction that something would be tooled or troweled or manufactured really helps sell the illusion to the subconscious mind that maybe this is actually real. So you just saw how we made and constructed these steps using one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of foam cut and flipped upward. But one of the tricks is knowing how did I calculate the height of each step and the tread depth to make sure everything got where I needed it to go and to get up exactly four inches. Well, part of that is knowing uh, in real life what a standard uh, riser and tread depth uh, would actually be. So I'm going to show you guys that right now. Okay. So basically, <clears throat> when I talk about a riser, I'm talking about the vertical portion of a step that goes upward, right? The vertical part. When I talk about a tread, I'm talking about the part that you actually put your foot on, which is the sideways part. So if you're looking at a cross section of steps, this is what it would look like, right? So, so you have some steps going upward like this. In this direction, you've got your riser, your tread, your riser, your tread, your riser, and your tread. Most risers are about six to seven inches in height, roughly, and most treads um, are about eight to 14 inches, depending on you know how big the steps need to be, how far they need to stretch, and the distance they need to stretch. I usually calculate my tread uh, depths at about 12 inches, and my risers at about six inches. But the risers is actually one of the key measurements to figure out how to get the height that you need to get and the distance you need to get it. So. How I did this exactly was I knew that my height needed to get up to about four inches or actually exactly four inches, which this is uh, exactly four inches. If I take a standard ruler in American standard dimensions, it's 12 inches, 12 inches equals a foot. If we divide one foot by 12, we get one inch, right? Because a foot is easily divisible by 12 and one 12 scale is the scale for most six and seven inch tall action figures, which I know many of you make things for. So you need to figure out <clears throat> your scale first. If it's 1 18th, 1 12th, 1 6th, all you need to do is divide your known dimension, in this case 6 inches, by the size of that scale. So if it was 1 6th, you would divide it by 6. If it was 1 12th, you would divide it by 12. So 6 divided by 12 is going to give you half an inch. Like 12 divided by 12 would give you 1 inch, correct? So we know that we want all of our risers to be about a half an inch. So if we need to get up from our ground, if we're looking at it sideways, to a four inch height, we're gonna need eight risers. And if we know our tread depth is one inch and we're gonna use eight risers, well, each riser has to have a tread, right? Until you get to where you abut the wall. That will be your last riser, correct? So let's just say we've got one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Your last, your eighth riser, because you're going to need eighth risers, is going to be on your wall. So you really only need set to make seven risers. If this makes sense, let me show you what I'm saying. So here's a tread. Here's one riser. Here's another tread. Here's two risers. Here's another tread. Here's three risers. Here's another tread. Here's four, five, six, seven. Right? I just drew seven risers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But our eighth one is the wall right? You don't have to do this. You can make your stairs go all the way up and then abut them. This is just one method. So if our tread depth is one inch, we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inches because that top tread is going to be our last riser. So we need seven risers and seven inches of tread depth. So we know that our stairs are going to have to go outward seven inches plus whatever the thickness of the glue is in between each of the slabs of foam, right? So if each one of these is a one inch piece of foam, you can start this one at one half inch tall, one inch tall, one and a half inches tall, two inches tall, two and a half inches tall, three inches tall, 
and three and a half inches tall. And then you got your four inch height. So you graduate these a half an inch taller, glue them together. But what if you don't have, because this ends up, what do we say? This ends up being seven inches of tread depth. What if you don't have seven inches available of the direction you're going? Well, then you can take it and you can turn it like this. So instead of one of these risers being uh, a single step, you can have it be a platform. So then you get into, here's your platform, <clears throat> and then you get into your step. So let's say we want one, two, three. We want this one to be our platform. There's one, two, three, four steps below it. So there's one, two, three, four, four steps. One, two, three, four. And our fifth step is now this riser. And then we're gonna go up this way. And so we need two more steps up here. So we've got our riser, excuse me, riser, tread, riser, tread, all right? Right? So we've got five, six, and seven. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So how far this now goes out from the wall, let's say this is your wall back here, and this is where you start and go up. This is gonna depend on how wide you make your steps. So let's say you make your steps four inches wide, then you've got one, two inches depth here, plus four inches on this width, right? Because you're gonna turn. So this is gonna be four inches wide. So one, two, plus four is six inches. So your overall depth is six inches. And then you turn and come down, you've got one, two, three, four, plus five, you've got nine inches this way, right? So you might be able to shrink the dimension this way, but it goes farther out that way. You always have to recover whatever you lose in the other direction. So take in mind these calculations when you start to turn things or move things. And if you want to make your risers taller, you can do less of them. If you want to make your treads longer, you can do that too if you want your steps to be longer. But this is basically how I calculated exactly the math I needed. I wanted six steps. I divided four inches by six, which gave me closer to five-eighths of an inch. And I just did uh, five-eighths of an inch, five-eighths of an inch, five-eighths of an inch, five-eighths of an inch. And if you look really close, this last riser is a little bit taller than all the ones that came before it to compensate for the difference in math. That's how I did that, okay? And you can see here on the bottom, it's just one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of foam joined together. And that's how you calculate basically steps. That's essentially the basic concept. If you're wondering about how I made this rail, that was something I shared with my channel members as my thank you for their support. They got to see all this in picture form as I made it, as I painted it, as I weathered it, with explanations of how I did that. So thank you channel members for being here. If you're interested in becoming a channel member, go ahead and check that join button, see what the perks are. I share updates all the time with the commissions and projects I'm working on whenever there's a relevant update to share that I feel is uh, something interesting. So thank you to my channel members and thank you for being here. Thank you for watching this video. Please hit the thumbs up if you liked it. Please hit that subscribe if you've been watching my videos. I really appreciate you coming around and I hope you have a good rest of your day.